Scrum Master are always difficult to cope with, they've always got a big opinion of themselves. They think they know a bit about the forwards, they know a bit about the backs. So we give, I just got a microphone. Can you chat everybody through your try a couple of weeks ago? Because apparently you haven't stopped talking about it. Um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about. It. Yes, you do, come on. <laughs> Yeah, get on the floor and not really get on the driveline, so it's pretty lucky. The driveline floor is offside floor, so I'm not going to say that. Oh, nice one. Nice one. Like all scrum mouse, cheating lines, all good. Uh, Joe, uh, we got South Africa. How tough a proposition for South Africa right now? I think the world number one, world champions. We always talk about how tough it's going to be out front. That's where you live. Is it going to be as tough a game for the boys this afternoon? Yeah, I think you, you look at the body language of all the South Africans here today. I was trying to ignore them. And you can see that they're very confident, and they've got reason. I've been looking forward to today's game, um, because we're going to see where England are going. We were a pressure team for a couple of years, doing what Eddie wanted, playing this pressure game. Now, today, against the team who do that far better than anyone else in the world. If you do it poorly, you see what happened to England in the World Cup final. Um, so England, I think, are trying to move away from that. Um, become a team who, yes, they can compete in the pressure side. However, if they can't recognise the chances and execute them. When they do fall their way, they're, they're not going to be able to win that. But if they try and play too much and play in situations that don't work, again, that'd be a long day. Um, on top of that, you've got issues around the front five. So today, frankly, will be a fascinating game. Um, Joe's in the coaching world at the moment, so if you didn't understand that, there's some <laughs> translation available a bit later on. Um, to get to an even more uh, an area that we all understand, the front row. People here will be fascinated with what goes on at the front row. We've got so much inexperience in the England side. I'll come to you later, Matt, but uh, I think this is going to be Joe's field. Yeah, again, when it comes to front row, it's not... No, you're on your own, mate. Yeah, I mean... The South and Scrums are the best in the world. Now we've got guys who are playing today who... Why are they, sorry to interrupt, uh, why are they the best in the world? Because look at the morphology of the South Africans in South African shirts and just this room. Look at the what? In, sorry, look at the body shape of the guys in this room. I'm in France, sorry, I'm eating the car all over time. But look at the body shape of the South Africans in this room and you'll see why uh, they're good at the front row players. Um, so why... I know we're, we're, so we're quite low in the front row in terms of numbers and, and availability. I do think he's... <laughs> how old were you when you made your first England appearance? 21. 21. So we've got a 21-year-old and a 23-year-old. It's not their first radio, but they're young and experienced. Do you think they'll be nervous? Will they just not be able to look uh, beyond running out and getting ready? Will they, they won't, like, my view is they won't be thinking too much about what they're up against, the best in the world. They'll be raring to get out there and prove that they should be wearing that shirt all the time. Yeah, they certainly will be. The issue is the front row, there's a lot more technical aspects to learn. Push, and, uh, I think you just have to push. You don't, yeah, you got to push out and lift, lift in the line. Yeah, push out and lift, push out and lift, two very big technical things. Now, these young guys, they're not going to have those technical abilities, and you don't get as strong as you can do by 21. It's still quite young. You've got a little way to go, even at that age. Yeah. So, props don't tend to fulfill their potential until they're a little bit older. Um, what about physically? You were talking about their mentally, then, were you? you know? No, <laughs> I think that's permanent. The yeah, <laughs> Sorry, any pop forwards out there, I love you. I'm not going to fight with you. Um, right, let's move on to Matt Tate. Yeah. Uh, we've got another uh, change in midfield. So, Tuolangi on the wing last week, I thought he was okay then. I thought he played okay. Now he's back at centre, what I think is, is his best position. And a long swing. How do you think they're going to go in against the long day and Am? Who I think Am, the Kanye Am right now, is the best centre in the world. I just think he's awesome. He's got defence, he's got some subtle hands, he's good in attack. Uh, how do you think that competition is going to go today? Well, I, I agree with you, Joe. I think Manu's best position is back in that midfield. We saw Henry Slade actually in the backfield quite a lot. He was acting as the second fullback last week. So hopefully they'll be a little bit more settled. Um, on Joe's point, I think. How, how open England will play will be largely dictated by the parity they get up front. Yeah. Particularly in that second half and South Africa bring on that whole new front row. You have Marcus Smith at 10 alongside Slade and, and Slint to Lange. There's only one way you can play. Um, I think the biggest issue we saw a little bit in the World Cup final was 
just the South African pressure game with their defensive setup. And on your point, the Kanye Rama 13 is the best, aren't they? The best defensive 13 in the world at the moment. It's so important that hinge defense. Yeah. And you've got to pick up the goal three, three along the other wings. They're very, very good readers of the game. But I'm just really, I'm really excited to see the way that Marcus Smith, how, that, how he does it. Quinn's working on it. In behind that front line, those balls over the top, looking to manipulate those wingers coming forward. What are you expecting from Marcus Smith today, Matt? I mean, I've seen him at Harlequins, they play a totally different style, free and open, go for it, Marcus, you know what you can do, there you go. I can't imagine any saying, Marcus, we brought you in to play like you do at Harlequins. Um, how tough is it going to be for Marcus to play some really sort of shrewd, smart rugby under some restraints, I would imagine? He's just he's a very confident guy, he's, and he's, he's a very shrewd operator. I think, you know, at Quinns we see that open, expansive game, but that detracts a little bit from the way that he manages the game. I think Quinns will actually kick the ball more than any other team in the league. Yeah. It just happens to be with an attacking kicks, mm -hmm. and I don't think anyone will discourage that. I think where he's going to be very busy today, and if I was Jack Neymar, I'd be sending great review of the his channel, David Dill on the his channel all day to try and tire him out to reduce the influence he had on the game yeah. from the second point of view. Cool, cool. Ben, Ben, coming, winger, World Cup winner. Uh, I guess South Africa have to change the way they play. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a bike back to Germany as well. German Wrestling World Cup winner. Yay! Yay! Uh, ben. Just picking up on what Terry was talking about with Mark Smith, it's going to be interesting if they can get going forward more today. I mean, they are heavy on front row. It'll be interesting to see how they're going to play with their kicking game and how they're going to remanage them into the game. Do you reckon they've got much creativity in the centre? Yeah? Well, that's going to be interesting. And you reckon he's a natural fit more in the centre? I agree. But I also think that he can be a bit um, isolate himself a little bit if he tries to go for the interception or play on his own. And uh, we went, went around the, uh, the, the nine. He's going to be sniping and looking for those mismatches. And it's going to be hard for the wingers and fullbacks to get into the game. And hopefully that they'll be able to get something on the front foot today to be able to do that. What was your preparation like? Give the audience an, an idea of. Uh, so you're playing South Africa. They're going to kick more than. They like the box kicks. They always have all throughout the eras. What was your prep for that? How would you, what was your training like? What was your thinking like during the week? Because that's what the England wingers would be doing this, and would have been doing this week, getting ready for that. Because they know South Africa is going to box, box, box. That's not Formula One box, box. That's rugby. Yeah, yeah I think that um, as, a, as a back three, obviously you want to take every high ball there is. Um, you want to be able to challenge that as well. But it's counter attacks important, and getting your your centres working back and, and getting that ball away from you know the hot spots and playing into space. Um, I would imagine that's what, well, we've noticed that at, 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 um, at Quinn's, Stuart does that really well at, um, at, at Leicester, being able to counter-attack. He's been able to do that on, you know, on, on the big pitch, uh, and do it with confidence, and sort of play back into their territories. It's just to try and get to not do it again, and say, well, actually, you're going to come and do that here, then you've got to kick better than that, kick to turn. Um, and you see, that, that's why I said, it'd be really interesting to see how England's kicking game is going to go today. Yeah, I hope we don't see it. I only see clever kicking from England, uh, but not too much. Alex, your recent experience with Amy Jones. Nobody's uh, recording anything. Um, is he a really nice guy? Lovely guy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what's the message to you and you? What was the message, kind of message he was giving you coming into the squad, playing, getting on? Um, obviously, very intense. Um, it's quite a lot of First half, first couple of weeks ago, uh, it's just positive all week about me and say, oh, do we do so well with this? Um, I think some of the players, it's quite a lot of shots. I think Tom Curry, Mark Smith, sometimes he's here, and Jonah, all the time, etc. So we have yeah, five the players. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the other lads are very positive, um, which I think is great as a big mixture of fun. So was it, uh, how surreal was it for you, or you, were you ready for it? You've watched guys, you've seen internationals, and you're part of the, you don't become part of the squad. How cool was that? Uh, it was obviously very cool, it was probably the best days of my life. Lots of selfies, uh, fast. Lots of selfies, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I was quite nervous before, and obviously, um, playing, it just obviously, playing, 
to play more music for yourself. Um, yeah, it's great. Yeah, I think my mate is just got pissed off. I know you're doing a bit more than me. You what, sorry? My mate just got steamed for the whole game. <laughs> 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 sorry, guys, sorry to interrupt there. Sorry to interrupt, but I remember my first cap. My memory came flooding back. I think I just played with England my first time in Australia. And Jeremy came up to me in the bar and came up to me and said, How do you feel to play with Jeremy Gusker today? <laughs> <laughs> How was it? It was a special moment. I was really happy. Um, okay, uh, we've got Luke in the audience with a microphone.